The last time Hoyk played a local derby at Mansfield Park, Gala shocked them by going ahead 21-0. So when Jed Forrest came calling, they weren't going to take them for granted. They were led out by Bruce McNeil today, but it was Jed who drew first blood. From an attacking scrum, Darren Gillespie broke away, shook off the attentions of Rory McPherson and gave the scoring pass to Paul Pringle. A dream start for the visitors, with only a few minutes on the clock, and with Ewan Scott kicking the conversion, it was 7-0 to Jed. And it wasn't long before Jed doubled their lead. Rory McPherson fed out to Craig Neesh, who bulldozed his way into the Jed half. But when McPherson tried to pass to Danny Landles, Gillespie knocked the ball out of his hands. Ewan Scott quickly passed to Gary Hill, who had Gregor Young on his shoulder, and no one was going to catch him as he charged towards the line for another try. And all of a sudden, the Hoyt supporters were beginning to get a sense of déjà vu. Scott kept the conversion low but accurate, and Jed were 14 points up. The Greens are more than capable of scoring tries, of course, and it wasn't too long before they had a real chance to get on the scoreboard. They took play right up to the Jed line, and some quick hands through the backs gave them the opportunity to drive over. Lee Armstrong crashed through the defence, but Lewis Young and Gary Hill combined to prevent him from getting the ball down. Back came Jed Forrest, and before the break, they scored their third try. Ewan Scott setting up Gary Hill on the crash ball, and he went clean through two tackles before selling Neil Rennick a dummy and racing in under the posts. It really was a good try, this one. Hill still having some work to do and supported by Gregor Young, so a couple of options there, but the little show-and-go foxed Rennick, and he thoroughly deserved the score. Scott converted and there was that familiar scoreline at Mansfield Park, Hoyk losing by 21-0. And that was the score at the break with plenty for coaches Jerry McGuinness and Deke Armstrong to talk about. Well, it was vital Hoyk got the first score of the second half and to their credit, they managed it. Bruce McNeil peeling round from the front of the line out to take McPherson's pass and with just Ewan Scott to beat, the big man went straight through at pace to claim his fifth try of the season. You have to say, not many players would fancy bringing down McNeil in full flight and this was one of those times where you just knew there was only one outcome as soon as he got the ball in his hands. Neil Rennick drop-kicked the conversion and Hoyt were on the way back, but still with a mountain to climb. Soon after, David Lowry nearly got over the line for a try, but the referee said it was held up. So he was doubly determined to get the touchdown when he received the ball moments after, and this time he got the thumbs up, and he was absolutely delighted with his effort. Rennick slotted the extras and Hoyt were now just seven points behind. And just look who popped up again to cause even more grief for Jed Forrest. Bruce McNeil saw another slight gap in the Jed defence, took route one to the line, where he managed to ground the ball to the satisfaction of the officials, and it was try number six for him for the season. But more important, Hoyt were right back in this game, and with Rennick successful again, it was all square. Then Jed were penalised, giving Rennick a simple chance to take the lead, and remarkably the Greens had overturned a 21-point deficit to lead by three points. They held that lead into injury time, and as the clock ran down, Jed Forrest knew they had to salvage something from this game, and attempted to pick and drive their way as far up the field as they could, to maybe give Ewan Scott a chance at a drop goal to gain a draw. The clock read six minutes of injury time played and it looked like Hoyk had turned the ball over but referee Marcus Caton said they did it illegally and despite protests he awarded a penalty to Jed Forrest handing the last kick of the match to Ewan Scott to try and snatch a draw. The teenager hit the ball perfectly, it sailed between the posts to make it Hoyk 24, Jed Forrest 24 and on reflection a fair result for what was a cracking border derby. Jed, to their credit, played really well, came out all guns blazing, they've done really well, uh, put us under the course, scored the three tries and it was hard to, hard to keep up with the tempo with them. Second half, we, uh, we knew we were up against it, <coughs> we just uh, hit the change around, got a roll for Jerry, DK and that, and uh, we kind of came out knowing that if we didn't score first we would be, probably be the, the second team of the day. There's a few games this season where we've, we've panicked a little bit when we've been in the lead instead of just calming it down and playing some sensible rugby, you know, and closing yeah. games out like this. But, uh, you know, all in all, we, we, that last-minute last penalty um, saved, saved our bacon, if you like, but uh, I think we deserved at least a, a draw today, you know. It was really disappointing for us to come off the back of two, two wins, to come here to our home, home tough, massive crowd, <coughs> and uh, 
let them down again. Uh, I would say we probably should have. We were aiming for a bonus point win there, but as I say, Jed, uh, Jed hats off to them, played really well. The season's going better really for us than what, what the, the league suggests. I think um, we're working on a lot, we've got a lot of young lads in the side. Uh, we've changed the way, completely the way we're, we're used to playing. Um, and it's starting to come together now, you know. I mean, obviously, coming away to Hike is a great result for us, really, 24s each. Um, you know, I think as a whole, the season, obviously, the results could have been a lot better. But, um, you know, I think it's, it's, we're going to get there, we're getting there. So I'm quite pleased in the way the lads are responding and the way that we're, um, we're changing the game plan, sort of. Nine games now into the season, what's your assessment? <coughs> uh, it's all to play for. Um, all the teams are playing well, maybe five teams in contention. Uh, I think every every point is vital, every single point is vital. Uh, you've just got to try and pick up points left, right and centre. Uh, 